concrete piers. The Little Schuylkill River, now just a stream, will be directly below the train. To the left of the train, you'll be able to see the dry dam on Nyford Creek. As we go over the bridge, feel free to take all the damn pictures you wish. <laughs> Dollar a shot. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I'll be here all day. But anyway, to give you a little history of the hometown high bridge, the first incarnation of the bridge was completed in 1870 when this line was first built. It was made entirely of wooden timbers. The threat of fire caused by the hot coals and sparks from steam locomotives was a constant problem. To safeguard against this, two watchmen were employed to inspect the bridge following the passage of every train. They lived nearby in company-owned homes and worked 12-hour shifts. In the event of a fire, wooden barrels filled with water, along with buckets, were placed on either side of the bridge approximately every 100 feet. It should be noted that in those early days, there were no side railings we on go. the bridge. However, the wooden structure was built in such a way that any piece of timber could be removed and repaired without having to stop train traffic from crossing the bridge. In 1896, the wooden bridge was replaced by a steel structure, and in 1931, the Phoenix Bridge Company rebuilt the bridge into its current form. It was originally intended to be a double-track bridge to carry a planned main line running between New York and Chicago. During World War I, owing perhaps to its strategic location, the bridge was guarded by soldiers against trespassers and intruders.